Good morning, and welcome to Conversations in Christ. We invite you to sit back, open your Bible, and engage in a dialogue as we learn together more about the incredible gift of grace that God has given all of us. Now, let's reason together in love. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Carl. Hey, good morning, Bill. And good morning to all the listeners out there, and we appreciate you being with us. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's been a week. Uh, just a week? Actually, more than a week for <laughs> us, but we'll, we're going to pretend like it's okay. been a week. Yeah. So I think you were going to share something about uh, we're getting more exposure. We're expanding, yeah. yes. Right. So uh, we do about five things now. We've got the radio show that we have done for a long time, and... Um, what, 12, 12 years, and that's on KNCO at 8.30 on Sundays, and it's also, you can get on knco.com and, and live stream it also at 8.30. Then we're adding uh, local television, the uh, local cable TV, Channel 11. They're going to start airing our program at the same hour at 8.30, and you can also, Channel 11 on the cable TV, or you can get on their website, it's Nevada County Media. And they live stream it also, so you, you can just do it on a computer. So radio, TV, computer, and then we have our, our website where we have all the podcasts, past, present, and some of the future ones. <laughs> They're all on there, and that's it, at uh, conversationsinchrist.net. So get on, look at that. Then we have two other things that are more interactive. Uh, all of those things previous are one-way conversations, and we have two ways for you to do two-way conversation. We have a Conversations in Christ midweek where um, we're going through the Gospel of John and just looking at the grace of God and in Christ and in salvation. It's terrific. And that meets at Wednesday night on Zoom. And if you want to join us, you can. Uh, we have a great time of discussion. And uh, text or email me in order to get a, a Zoom link. And then finally, uh, we are going to meet on Sunday evenings at 5 p.m. at Roundtable Pizza in Grass Valley. And this is just a chance to, to meet live, to ask questions, give us your feedback, have a conversation in Christ that's two-way. And if you come out then, you get 10% off on pizza on Sunday night, and you can, you can have Coke or beer or whatever you want, since it's not a church service. Well, <laughs> that's our version of communion. Yeah, there you go, pizza and beer. Actually, that would work, because yeah. I think Christ was saying, every time you eat, not just once a month, and it's right. good to do a once a month ceremony, but every time you eat, remember the food and the drink that you have represent what I've done for you. Mm -hmm. So I, I do communion about three times a day. Okay, that's the yeah, one too. All right. Well, good. We're expanding. We are expanding. That's about as far that's as great. we're going to go because that's, that's a full time. I'm, I'm waiting to get nationally syndicated. <laughs> <laughs> Careful what you wish for. <laughs> yeah, you might get censored. <laughs> that's right. So uh, we're looking at Romans 8. We're continuing our series from Romans 5, 6, 7. Now we're in Romans 8, and we're starting out in verse 1 this morning. And, you know, how I look at Scripture nowadays is completely different than how I looked at it before when mm -hmm. I just used to look at it from there's some that are saved and they're in the flesh, and then there's some that are there in the spirit, and then there's some that are not saved and they're in the flesh. And, and it's uh, so you, you get this, this crazy thing going where you're trying to sort out, you know, who's, who needs to get saved and who, and, uh, and who isn't. So, hey, can I can I do a little quick caveat yeah. before you go on? Because people will get confused, and yeah. this is this is always a point of confusion. We say save. The Greek word means to deliver. So you have to ask ask delivered from what? Mm -hmm. So in one sense, we are already saved by what Christ did on the cross, and that's right. the big salvation, saved from sin and death. And we know because everyone's going to be raised from the dead. So. Christ has brought salvation to everybody in that sense. But then there's another aspect of salvation, and that's when you believe, and it doesn't earn you anything with God, and it doesn't affect the salvation Christ did on the cross, but you get delivered from the, empower, from the uh, entanglement of sin in life. 
And so often people combine those two, and when we say everyone saved, we don't mean everyone believes and is engaged with God in a, in a relationship, but we do mean everyone saved in Christ on the cross, and they still need to believe in order to engage with him and enjoy that freedom and relationship that he's already really put in them. And we talked about a lane That's dormant right. last right. time. And so walking right, around just, like a zombie. Yeah. A lot of people are walking around like zombies. I've done that. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes well, I don't know I do about that. that with, but... I do that before I get my coffee sometimes, <laughs> too. But. <laughs> okay, so yeah. go on yeah. from there. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad you, uh, you, you helped explain that. So when we're going into Romans 8, and we're looking at verse, verses 1 and 2 right now, and I'll just read that real quickly for us. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, there, there's, there's a lot there. And, uh, yeah, we could spend the whole hour. We, we could. Easy. It's so powerful. <laughs> yeah. It, you know what it is for me when I that that I've been reading that several times this week, and it feels to me like this message for me is my internal emancipation proclamation. There you go. Mm -hmm. From my mind, it's your declaration. It's of my. Independence. It is yeah. spiritually. Yeah, it's Any free. It, it's free. It yeah. frees us in the mind. It's beautiful. And actually, everyone's been declared that in Christ. They just don't know it. They don't, they don't know experience it. it. They think that Karl Barth called it the great illusion. Yeah. People think they're somehow outside of Christ when actually he's already taken care of business for them. Mm -hmm. And so the only thing that needs to change now is the renewing of their mind, mm -hmm. which is what you try to help people with in counseling. Absolutely. Yeah, but that aspect of, of living with that experience, uh, that internal experience of there is now no condemnation um, right. at all coming from God the Father. And so it's not based on anything as far as the sin, uh, unconfessed sin, uh, living a certain way, living righteously. Uh, all of that has been taken care of. So when we stumble, when we sin, uh, God is not standing back uh, waiting to take us to the uh, to the woodshed and and give us the big you know spiritual spanking he, <laughs> he he looks at us understands our condition and there's absolutely no condemnation coming from him and I lived before I started understanding grace and what we've been sharing and on this radio program as as a person who was a believer I looked at my life and when I when I sinned and when I made a mistake, I uh, fully felt that I was outside of my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And I felt condemned. And well, and you might have been on your end. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, he didn't leave you, and he's not uh, going to do something horrible to you, but you, you may have moved out of there in your mind, and so you tend to condemn yourself. Yeah. But he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't need to. He's taken away the sin. And this the is even after all the Bible... Uh, theology that you had? Oh, yeah. You know, because when you're uh, being taught, there's both grace and then there's the law. And, right. And there's, you can't mix the two at all. But what we do is what mix we try the two. To do in, in church life, right. so to speak, is we try to teach both and say, you know, both are, are worthwhile, both are going to help you stay on track. And when you see in verse 2, we see for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. And so that law was the Ten Commandments, and, and, uh, and which, as he says later on, we don't have that ability to actually live. And, uh, and so, but when we're looking at why, are, why is there no condemnation, when you understand that, that whole aspect of when Christ died on the cross, we, we died with him, we were buried mm -hmm. with him, and we rose with him. And we participated fully in what took place on the cross that day. We're all participants, willing participants. It's a done deal. Yeah, it, it is. And so there's no way, since we're all in Christ, right. and, and there's no separation from him, we have his, his holiness, you know, his whole life is, is in us, our blamelessness, perfection, and we're talking about the new creation. There is no way that God's going to punish us because he would be likewise punishing his son. 
because his son is the essence of who we are spiritually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. No, that's why there's no condemnation in us, because we're in Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like we, we want to keep the law by grace. Right? God's going to graciously well, help me keep yes. the law. Actually, there, and there's some truth to that, in that when you walk in the Spirit, you don't fulfill the desires mm -hmm. of the flesh. And you actually, you are keeping the law, but not because you're trying to keep the law. Mm -hmm. It's because it's instinctive in you as, you as you are in Christ and you live out that life, His life through you. Guess what? You don't commit adultery. You're not coveting, at least not as much. Uh, not stealing things. You don't want to go there. We talked about that last week. Why would you want to go there when you're walking in the Spirit? You don't need it. So we, we keep the law in that He kept the law for us. Uh, he fulfilled the law. He says, I didn't come to do away with it. I came to fulfill it. I took care of it, folks. You're good. You're good to go now. Now, we still screw up. I mean, every, everyone does that. But that's no reason to condemn yourself or, or um, move out, you know, get, get in that tanglement, mm -hmm. uh, that, that mind entanglement where you're in, and that, that's just very defeating. So when we know who we are and what we've got, we can go with that. Mm -hmm. Very freeing. Yeah. And I think, Donna, you could probably, you know, um, you know, confirm this, but there are so many people walking around feeling guilty and condemned. Guilt Guilt is one of the most problematic things that I see. Mm -hmm. And people say it. I just feel so guilty. I can't get rid of my guilt yeah. all the time. Yeah. Well, we're kind of conditioned. In, we are. In that. We are conditioned. Even in church. And I think it's well-meaning. Boy, we got to really try to, mm -hmm. to live the Christian life and read your Bible and go to church and do all these things. And I remember as a kid going, I can't do this. I really tried. And, in, and then you kind of, kind of give up. When you give up, you go, well... Hey, if I can't do it anyway, I might as well do it all. And then, and then we get in the tailspin. Yeah. Guilt, you know, guilt, we can look at guilt in a couple of different ways. But, but for example, if I ran a red light or ran a stop sign and I was stopped by the police, and I go, yeah, I did it. Give me my ticket mm -hmm. and I'll pay it. I was guilty mm -hmm. of running that red light. But I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Well, I mean, I have to pay three hundred dollars, but <laughs> you might lose. It. But but I'm not going to carry it around as a burden like I committed, right. and so I think if we looked at 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 yeah, okay, confess that and keep on moving. Yeah, don't let it become don't your identity. Let it be, no, it'll exactly. Own you. It'll own you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It works for me. Yeah, but see, that's why Paul talks about the uh, the law. Uh, brought sin and death because what the law does is the law when we because the law we we see in the Old Testament that when the law came came along it all it had as far as um, its um, gradation was perfection right it wasn't you know we're just going to grade on the curve here and that's how God's going to view us the law demanded perfection and and so that's why when you try to live the law you'll never ever live it. Because no, none of us can can live it perfectly, and when we when we think that we're under the law, and and when we when we sin, that condemnation and that guilt is is immediate, and that's what the law does. And then when it does that activity in our life, it produces frustration, depression, um, confusion in terms of our relationship with God. We don't know if we're loved or unloved. Uh, we don't know if he's sitting on a bar stool, swerving around every time we sin. He turns his back on us, and then we try to behave. The schizophrenic then, God. Yeah, yeah. Then, then we hope that he can, you know, turn his turn his face to us, and and that impression is is being taught over and over again. And I hear it on Christian radio. And again, I know it's all well meaning, but it sets up a yin yang view of who God is. That's right. So we live a defeated or semi defeated life, and then we want to. Impose it on others. Mm -hmm. No, really, we go around and I'm, you're feeling that guilt and that trying really hard, and then you see other people and you you're telling them they got to really try hard too, and then you're all caught up in that that vicious mm -hmm. cycle. And again, that's not that's not we're not saying we don't sin. John makes it very clear. If you say you're without sin, you're a liar. Mm -hmm. It's not true. But you don't stay there. Yeah. You admit that and say, that's, that's what I've done. It's not who I am anymore yeah. in Christ. That's the problem. My, my daddy already paid the bill. I'm yeah. good. Yeah, mm -hmm. he did. Yeah. 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 
But you, the success in terms of how do you get there so that you're not living under the law, thinking it's all about you, trying to live obediently. And I, in my life, where I got to is I finally just turned to God one day and I said, I'm done. Yeah. You know, it, it, if, if you really want this kind of life in me, then you need to do it because yeah. I'm done. And he said, finally. <laughs> yeah, I know. yeah, finally I got somebody I can work with. It was years and years and years. When it's I about finally, time. I just, burnt, I just literally burnt out on self. You tried so, everything else, Bill. <laughs> I tried everything, and it, and it wasn't working. And, well, uh, and so I, I encourage our audience, you know, if, if that's going on in your life and you're feeling frustrated and you're trying to keep up and you're trying to live holy and righteous and all that stuff and you're, and, and you're doing it because you think that's what God wants me to do, you're living in the flesh because you're trying to live the obedient life on your own. And when you get to that point where you just say, all right, God, do this in me. Yeah, it, it is what he wants us to do, but it's not the way he wants us to do it. <laughs> you know, because when we try to do it, when you try to do what we know God wants us to do, he, but he wants us to, to have that walk with him because of the peace and freedom. It's for us. It's not, how dare you defy me? I'm, gonna, I'm ready to give it to you. It's, I love you so much, and I want, just like a kid, you want them to have a, a good life and a good experience and a relationship with you, and that's what God wants. Mm -hmm. And so it's how we do it. As we try to do it on our own, uh, it, it really doesn't work. In fact, you can, you can end up in the quicksand getting pulled down into the, that identity of sin, the focus on sin, instead of living in the solution in Christ. And yeah, you slip up once in a while and you say, Father, forgive me, and you move on. And it's a, it's a joyous, free, uh, peaceful life. It is. Mostly. Mostly. Yeah, mostly. For, unless you're a realtor. Yeah. And then... <laughs> Bill calls or, it, or a counselor. Bill calls it the instinctive life. Yeah. I call it the intuitive life, yeah. but good. they both work. Both good. They, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, yeah, when you start to live that instinctive or intuitive life, what it does is that, that image of who Christ is is always in your mind. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, that's what gives you rest, peace, security. And, you know, there's confidence in that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. We don't have to doubt it. Mm -hmm. Because if we do start to like go go get off track for a minute, he'll he'll get us right back on track. He just makes the way. Yeah. So I know it's so simple, isn't it? It and is. I, and, yeah. I, and I missed it all it, and for I years. Got, I got to admit, it's simpler here talking about it than it is living it. And we all struggle. It's with not that. that we don't ever get stressed yeah. in our daily no, lives, yeah. 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 right? In fact, before we started today, I said, it helps me to come and do this show because it reminds me of all the things that are important. I, yes. I benefit from this as much as anybody listening. Perhaps. Yeah, me too. In fact, mm -hmm. sometimes I listen to the broadcast and I go, did we say that? I know. I think that too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes there's some good stuff that comes out. <laughs> yeah, I, learn from uh, from ourselves once yeah. in a while. So it would be great if, if uh, a lot of the audience was here. Well, on that pizza night. Well, there you be, go. Sunday, yeah, time. Sunday, uh, the first Sunday of the month. That's the only one uh, at 5 p.m. at Roundtable, and uh, we w we would love to uh, hear from you and maybe take some questions. We we can't answer them all. Maybe you can help us answer them, but we're going to tell you what we're telling you here. And hopefully, I mean, our goal is for you to have peace and to walk with Christ and, and live in joy and not perfectly and not never any trouble, but in the midst of your troubles, mm -hmm. to have that, that peace that passes understanding because, as we said a, a show or two ago, we live in complete optimism about life God mm -hmm. and eternity. Now, I don't mean every detail of our lives is optimistic, but ultimately, God's got it under control, and he's going to make things right. Two times in the New Testament, actually a number of times, but two I can think of, Ephesians 1 and Colossians 1, it says he's going to reconcile everything to himself, everything in heaven and on earth. Oh, well, that's pretty complete. That's, that's a hard one to spin. Mm -hmm. So we just go with that and believe, I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know how long it's going to take. But that's the character of God. That's his moral excellence, to be the God who desires everyone to be saved, and that heart is never going to change. His mode and method, and when he comes again, he's going to double down on saving the world. He's going to finish the job he started. He's not going to give up and go, uh, this ain't working. I think I'll quit. Yeah. No. No, no, no. And so 
having that optimism in the midst of a world war or daily trouble or finances or whatever, I'm, I'm, it doesn't take those away, but it gives you a peace that lets you cope with it in a, in a supernatural way that's just so wonderful. We would love for other people to have this. Yeah. I think when it comes to uh, objections in terms of uh, God's grace, and and in terms of it's unconditional, it's unlimited, and uh, and it goes beyond what we can even understand. And you just brought up the the world war situation. I think it's it's uh, it's probably easy for some people because they don't quite understand how big God's grace is to think. Well, you know, what about Hitler? Now, what about Putin? Yeah. And what about right. this? And what about that? And 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 it doesn't matter, you know, to God. Well, it matters, but it doesn't change his heart. All those people that, that I just mentioned, they're living with the same condition. They're, they're not condemned either by God. That's right. And, and it's up to them then, to, it, once they could start experiencing God's grace, that would transform them and transform their thinking and change the world. And we don't know that that isn't happening. We really don't. We have no way yeah. oh, to God's know. Oh, God's always at work. He's in always everybody. at work in everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I think we'll see by the end of the uh, Romans eight that 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 we everything will be conquered. Yeah. Everything yeah, how about has that? been. I know. Yeah, I'm that's jumping great. ahead. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That's what we jump ahead. I make <laughs> Yeah. Um, and you know, you said there's no condemnation, and that's true. Yeah. And yet, we're we haven't gotten to it yet. It might be next week. He says right below down here, God condemns sin in the flesh. Well, that's different. That's not condemning us completely holistic as a person. That's, I'm going to condemn sin in the flesh to get rid of that. He's like the great physician that comes in with a scalpel and cuts away all that. The cancer. cancer. Yeah, yeah. That, I was he says, thinking okay, the same it's thing. It's going to hurt. It's not going to be easy, but you're going to end up a healed person. Mm -hmm. So there is condemnation. It's what does God condemn, why, and how does he go about it? Not just this wholesale condemnation. It's spiritual surgery. Yeah, it's, spirit, there yeah. you go. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. So Putin needs it. God loves Putin. I don't like the guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm a vet, and I'm pretty angry about the whole thing. But uh, Hitler, uh, you know, people have poster boys for, and girls for, uh, you know, for sin, and yet... Uh, are they really any worse than us? It, isn't it a sinful heart? And are they any less capable of responding to God in yeah. the right situation with the, with, as the love of God begins to chip away at, at that crustiness of them? Uh, some of us, it was easier because we were raised a certain way. Mm -hmm. But God loves everybody. He's not giving up on anybody. It's not his character to do that. Why would he do that? He didn't come into the, he came into the world to save sinners. Yeah. Right? So that's his goal. Yeah, and I think what happens is, uh, you know, maybe in Christian life, we don't have a good perspective on what grace is all about in terms of it's unlimited, it's unconditional, it's it's um, it's universal, it's for everybody, and and it's so big that again, it's hard to even explain it, and we we stumble around and we try to, but we can't put in human terms something as um, as as big as this as this gift is. Oh, that. we don't we 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 don't have it all figured out here. Yeah. We don't fully appreciate it. We just know it better than we did before, and want to pass that on to others. But there, oh, it, it God is so much bigger than we ever imagined. He's not puny. He's not petty. He's magnanimous. He's the most wonderful, kind, loving being you can imagine. But with love comes some discipline and harshness. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about punishment earlier. Uh, take you out to the woodshed. If he does take us out to the woodshed, it'll have, be a nice talk with us and say, "I need to, I need to talk to you, or I need to give you a time out, or maybe, maybe he spanks. I don't know, can't spank anymore, but it's always for a corrective purpose. But, but really, the growing in grace—that's yeah. what what yeah. happens when we yeah. grow in grace. Yeah. We see the more we see of God's. Which way does it go? The more we see of our sinfulness, yeah. we see of God's grace. I think when you're walking yeah. with God, the correction can be pretty gentle. I think so. Uh, when you're not, he'll get as serious as he needs to. That's right. To do the job. He's not going to go, well, you're too tough of a case. Yeah. Do you give up on any of your clients? 
No, they usually give up. No, on and I was just going to say when Bill was saying he got so tired of the religious life, he finally just said, "Okay, I'm done." Yeah. And I've seen clients, and I and I know they're not ready. And I'll see them a year or two later, yeah. and I go, "You're ready now to do what you need to do." But you keep loving and to address. You don't give up on. Oh, I ne- no, because no. I know I'll see him again. There you go. That's the heart of God. That's the heart of God. Why would he ever, ever yeah. give up on yeah. anybody? Permanent? And we can't force people to see. No. And God, There's no way. God could, but doesn't want to because that's no, not love. No, that's not love. But he doesn't need to. He's got eternity. He's yeah. got all the power uh, in the universe at his disposal. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have to wrap it up, folks. Um, we're getting close to the end here, and I just want to remind you that on Sunday nights at... Uh, 5 p.m. the first Sunday of the month, please. You know, come on out, have a talk with us, and have some discussion. And 10% off on your pizza at Roundtable. And then Wednesday night we have a uh, a midweek study that you can get the link to to that from Donna comes to that, and um, uh, by emailing or texting me. So anything anything you want to say to the folks? Before? Oh, this is, this has been great. I I echo your. Uh, thought when he mentioned that uh, this is how we get fed by sharing our we cells. Do. That's we do. right. And uh, why well, you just enjoy getting together with the two of you. Okay, see you next week, folks. Thank you for listening to Conversations in Christ. Our prayer is that today's program has opened your heart and mind to a greater understanding, and curiosity about the gift of grace that God has given to each of us in and through His Son, Jesus Christ. Remember, you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing by God so that you may believe and begin to experience the very life of God in you. Tune in again next week for Conversations in Christ. If you have a comment or a question, we would love to hear from you. You can contact us at conversationsinchrist.net. That's conversationsinchrist.net.